Yeah, I was told it'd be half eight before anything happened, so we went off to do a quick interview with uh, Anna Verhoeven for our highlights package, and someone grabbed me and said we're underway. I'm not going to lie, my heart's racing a little bit. I got grabbed and told, hey, can you start the live stream for us? <laughs> and maybe with a little bit of warning, that would have been fine. <laughs> ah, you'd have cruised but, uh, it. You'd have cruised it. <laughs> it took me by surprise a little bit, standing in front of the camera without Charlie. <laughs> Man of your calibre, it'd be no problem. Kakora Fuji underway. I just want to say how uh, we've great a view we've got of the men's route. We can see pretty much the whole thing from almost directly underneath. Like, we're uh, sort of in uh, the distance we could touch the final route, which is really, really cool from the commentary booth. One note, actually, uh, before we start. The men's overall title can't be decided here today. It could have been if Roman de Gromsch in the final, but because he's not, it can't be. It will definitely go to Kranj. As far as the women go, Janja Garmre has won it after her performance here today. We were busy focusing on Anna Verhoeven, but quietly, Janja Garmre won the overall title. It was never really in doubt, was it? Five wins out of six coming here to China. It's a bit of a formality, but it's signed and sealed. Janja Garmre, the overall champion for 2017. Anna Verhoeven... The World Cup winner here in Xiamen and the men's overall competition can't be decided here. Roman de Grons did not make the final. It's down to him and Stefano Gasolfi and it will go to Cran. Really, really different style of route here with the men's. Um, funny enough, there are there were definitely no jugs on the women's route, and I don't think you could say the same thing for the men's route. There are a few of these holds that are really, really positive. Um, and whether or not the guys will be able to get a rest on them, I'm not so sure. Um, but it definitely makes for a different style of climbing. And much steeper as well. They've definitely got the um, more overhanging section of the wall as well, which unfortunately has been the section of wall which struggles a little bit in the wet temperatures. But the skies are looking relatively clear from what I can see. So hopefully we should be able to get through the whole, whole final without a hiccup. Kikora Fuji, multiple Boulder World Cup winner. Not seen him actually in any uh, lead finals this year until today. 10th, 11th, 12th. So far in the threes entered. Now heads out towards the uh, huge purple volumes. You can see the wind here in Xiamen really picking up. And he drops it just between the two huge purple volumes so out next Japan once again well represented how often do we say that Japanese root setter I think the qualifiers here were some of my favourite of the season um, and so for sure it's definitely a, a really jumpy and committing style that I think they, they love to climb as well so not surprising to see a few of them here in the final Chiro Koronaga away Lucky enough, I have to say we're right underneath the wall. We're in that little enclave down and right of uh, Kachira. We're looking directly up at the route. It is unrelentingly steep, this men's route. As I say, the route setters, where, where the angle of the wall eases, they actually bring the route out to the right to stay on the steep terrain. It's a brutal route. They did a great job with the women's in extremely difficult conditions. Anna Verhoeven, for me, and the results will prove it. The best climber in the final, the only one to top it. There's really not very much on that hold he just grabbed. He just took a nice little rest. Um, but I, we can see it just from where we are, and it's really tiny. Good feet, though. And a hard move to that uh, the jug on the volume there. Still to come, uh, Tomorrow Narasaki. Interestingly enough, actually, Tomorrow Narasaki and John Wen Chan, the last two climbers out, they were first and second in the semi final after extraordinary performances last week in the finals of Wujang. Seventh and eighth after superb semi final performance. And Shiro, I don't think the rope's quite caught in his leg there, but it still looks a bit of an awkward one. <laughs> It's really interesting because I, I was curious myself and so I took a look and at least for Tomoa it's not his first ser uh, season on the on the IFSC World Cups, um, lead World Cups sorry. He's actually done quite a few before and 
his uh, his results so far comparative to when he was last on the lead World Cup circuit is uh, they're pretty phenomenal. Yeah, it was the 2000, jump he made. 2013 he was last in a he'd never made a final before Wu Jack. But yeah, he competed in the lead World Cups back in uh, 2013. As you say, he made a massive leap. I mean, he, he, he's... Well, it's hard to say. He's, well, we'll keep an eye on Kachira. Yeah, so I was say, it's hard to say he's a favourite for the Olympics this far out at the moment. But Boulder in lead. He's not beginning to train speed and not looking too shabby there the, either. The rumour is he got an, he got nine seconds on his flash run of the speed route. <laughs> on his first attempt. I got about three and a half minutes. So, Kachiro out to the right. Through those worm-shaped volumes. He's going to have to fight here. Got his work cut out. It's not easy when the feet cut off like that. And again, he peels loose. Looking really solid, though. Managed to pull that together really quickly. So this is where we lost Kokoro. Was, uh, that move there. So that's an early lead for Kachiro. Still, he doesn't look super troubled. His feet cut loose a couple of times. And he, you can just see, only because we're right underneath him, just beginning to shake ever so slightly uh, with the elbow there. Rope just caught around the volume. I thought that might cause him a problem because he hadn't realised. So this is all new ground on the men's route. Looking really fresh. He is looking really fresh. Let's say we're right underneath him. You can see his arms quivering slightly and Whoa. we lose him. And he holds his hands out as if to say, what happened there? Yeah, oh, and man, his semi-final climb was really something phenomenal. Yeah. The route was way too easy. It was going to get like 10 tops. Um, but no, he just climbed super well. And so it'll be really cool to see how he fares on a, on a finals route. I was about to say he's under you no know, pressure because it's a bonus to be here, but it probably doesn't feel like that with the home crowd cheering you on. No, I think being on the being on all the posters, especially so young, would certainly wear down on you a little bit. Like you could definitely feel a little bit of home pressure, um, especially with there being other Chinese athletes doing quite well in the competition. I know for me that would potentially wear on me a bit, but he's um he's proving himself deserving at the very least. Yeah, he seems to like it here in Shia, man. His previous semi-final appearance was here in this very venue a year ago. <laughs> so, yeah, multi-discipline athlete, very successful in the youth competitions. Genuine all-rounder and a, a climber that a lot of people in the know are very excited about. Certainly a lot to deal with, though, when suddenly is a... 17 year old is signing autographs and all the rest of it as he has been this weekend showed him pretty well had a pretty good rest albeit quite low down on the route you can see his number fluttering in the wind it really picking up it's uh, increasingly good conditions here the wind's blowing it's a relatively dry wind it's relatively cool by sheer men's standards as well when we first arrived our first full day here was tuesday it was blisteringly hot horribly hot um, these are some of the best climbing conditions we've encountered this week it kind of feels like climbing on a uh, at a crag uh, when you're up there it feels super exposed with all the wind it's kind of cool not ideal but it's it's exciting yeah you got the wind in your hair yeah what you mean you've got an outdoor feel to it now he's got to launch it with the left hand sticks that crimp I remember feeling really happy I didn't do my hair the morning of qualifications. I've been really <laughs> upset. <laughs> A problem I'd love to have. <laughs> yeah, that uh, move up some looks a long way for you, Faye Pam. Makes it work. Back in control now. We're a bit further on, we saw Chiro Coronaga lose his feet. It's still very steep this section. It's a nice wall here in Shia, man. Lots of features, I mean big features, shapes of the wall for the root setters to play with. And the men have decided to go steep, steep, steep. Commits to the move outright. Chinese crowd enjoyed that. This is where we saw Kachiro have a couple of issues, lost his feet. 
That is real hip flexibility though, and that's the reward. But it puts him in a much more comfortable position. He's able to clip, now cross through. Fighting really hard. Yeah, now he's beginning to fight. I think the crowd are just about keeping him on the wall. Again, like Kakora Fuji. Oh. Struggles with that move to the left hand, but makes it work and just about hangs on. The crowd, I think, keeping him on the wall. He's absolutely burnt here, but still going hard. Ropes just caught there. He needs to free that, or it could give him a bit of friction, a bit of drag. And we lose him heading out to the right. But that's a superb effort from you, Fei Pan. Should be added, there was a, a ninth as well in the middle of that in Edinburgh. Only just missed out on another final. But yeah, when we saw him in Vila, you thought, wow, this guy could have an amazing season. It's not quite happened for him, but he's back in the finals. It seems like it's all or nothing with him. It's either a podium or a disaster. I think he's got a specific style. He really loves crimps. Anything that he can get into a crimp and lock off, he can just keep fighting. I'm watching him in China at the World Youth Championships, and he just had one of those routes that specifically suited him, and he destroyed us. Um, and then sometimes it just doesn't quite work out for him, but when he's good, he's really good. No problem so far with the swing. It's a dramatic looking move that one, but by the standards of this route, not an especially hard one. No, it's a super positive hold um, on top of the volume, so you'd be pretty unlucky to, to fall off of it, I think. And as you were saying about his love of crimps, he latches one with the right hand. And to be honest, he looks like he could fall asleep on it. He just doesn't get pumped on crimps. Oh, and he's matching the crimp as well. So just look at it. Now he heads out to the left. Yeah, so we're beginning, as is always the case, we begin to learn the routes here. Once we've seen a few climbers, you can see those big purple volumes where we just saw Yufei Pan come to a battling end. And uh, Kichiro Koronaga push things out a bit further up than that. We haven't really seen anyone onto the very last moves of the route. Route set has got it spot on in the women's competition on top there from uh, Anna Verhoeven. Now he's shaking out. This is where he's got to be careful. You need, to, you need to do these with a bit to spare, these moves. If you go full tilt on them and the feet come off, it's a big problem. You need to do them in control, like that. Really nicely done. Heel hook in place. Has he quite got that flexibility to... No, Fiddy has all the flexibility. I was about to say, That's, now he has it. Yeah. Don't even say that. <laughs> I've watched this man stretch at Innsbruck. It's ridiculous. I was finding it hard to believe there was someone out there more flexible than him, and he proves me wrong. There is more, more flexible. He gets that left foot up high and uh, makes the move look relatively easy. So this pop up here with the left hand is where we lost Kakora Fuji. No such worries for Fede. This is a hard move out right, though. Yufei Pan somehow stuck it by the skin of his teeth. Fede is Shoulders lining it up. so high. And he doesn't quite stick it. Bit of an awkward fall as well, but he's the right way up. I think there's a lot of neutrals cheering for Ronald de Grand. He's had a long career, it's taken a long time to find success. And, uh, It'd be interesting, interesting as to what maybe he thinks is the difference between this year and so many of the others that he's had. This is his, what, 102nd World Cup, I think? And, um, yeah, maybe not the best result from him for this one, but this season has just been, like, out of control for a more. Climb into the final low, a uh, really funny incident in the semi finals. Just blew it on a move that I didn't expect to stop it. Hi, Bin Q out of China, climbing second Chinese athlete. They had, a, they had an excellent Xiamen World Cup, particularly on the men's side. Decent performances in the speed climbing as well. Had the speed climbing earlier. Vladislav Delin and Anna Schaubert. Crowned overall champions and won the World Cup in Xiamen to seal it as well. See the results across the top of your screen. Shira Coronado is still leading the way. Hashtag IFSC 
WC. If you want to get in touch on Twitter, tell us your thoughts, predictions. Can anybody beat Jiro Coronagas? Current high point, 33 plus. Totally static on the big crossover. Almost totally static, still took a bit of a swing. Yeah, 25 year old Chinese club. Entered his first World Cup, believe it or not, in 2008. Time ago, but. Uh, been there or thereabouts for a while. Semi finals here, last time in Shearman, 13th that time. Lots of uh, Asia World Cups and not so many in Europe and, and America and such. So he's one of those climbers who just sort of, you almost forget about him and then he pops up out of nowhere and starts uh, crushing everybody. <laughs> yeah, into three bouldering World Cups earlier in the season actually, you the best finish of 39th in Vail. But yeah, as they've been at it a long time, he's made a big mistake there and that was him screaming and our microphones picking it up furious with himself uh, it looks like we're going to get through both genders which I really didn't expect and in pretty good conditions yeah for sure. had any rain since the climb has started Stefano Gasolfi the winner in GMN 2016 he could be the overall World Cup champion in 2017 sounds ridiculous for a, a high profile climber it's almost snuck under the radar so much attention has been on Roman de Grange and his extraordinary season but Stefano has just been finishing consistently throughout the season he also won in Wujang it should be said last week so he loves his China World Cups yeah he always seems to climb well here in China won in Wujang every single one of his gold medals has been from China yeah yeah as well two in Wujang one in Xiamen so far he could be less than six minutes away from another one we shall see but uh, he's absolutely in the running to win the overall title for 2017 just through consistency he's not really had any shockers Arco his hometown 11th really the only one missed the final as well in Briançon uh, excuse me in uh, Vila 11th there but otherwise it's just been finals podiums and one win and it's kept him in the hunt and he's, you never know it will go to Cran we'll be there on the 12th and 13th of November four weeks time and this man could claim the overall title it would really help his chance of doing so if you could have a good result here though yeah for sure definitely boost him up on the list make it a little bit a little bit easier perhaps yeah it was a great moment when he won in Xiamen last year it's a really spectacular venue and he kind of climbed into the light it was an awesome moment and it was on this right hand side of the wall you might remember it if you're watching this live or you've been back to watch the replay it was on this section of wall where the men's route went not quite the same line but uh, on the same section of wall that's where we lost hiding Q from for Stefano nice and accurate up to that crimp hard moves though he's still crimping pretty hard you can see having to focus for sure and uh, yeah, the wind's definitely picking up is the only thing, so a few of those draws are a little bit harder to clip, especially the ones on, on longer slings. Stefano pops out to the right, he's got that nice, uh, got a really nice springy style. Dynamic. Super springy. Oh, too springy. Too springy. Tries to cross through to that second pink volume. <laughs> we were talking about springy just before and and the potential of being maybe a bit too springy we'll see you don't see Timo make mistakes too often yeah, yeah. but it definitely makes me just like a little bit on edge when I see someone jumping through some of those slopers like that 
Yeah, it's funny. It's like he can't resist jumping. His, his, his natural instinct is a high risk move. Go, 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 go. Yeah, it's just pop, pop, pop. Move, move, move. So we were just saying how nicely Stefano Solfi was climbing and how dynamically he was climbing. He fell on a relatively innocuous looking move. To know it, the trim is still no problems for him. Yeah, it's looking really good so far. Looking really good still, looking really confident. Oh, bit of a foot slip there. Got to be careful placing his feet properly, especially like Anak was saying earlier in the humidity. So this is where we lost Stefano, it was up to that uh, second pink banana. Goes out. Huge purple volumes. That's where we lost his compatriot Kokoro. Tomoe Narasaki, he's having to fight here. Three minutes, 43 left on the clock. Clicking from what looks like a pretty uncomfortable position. He's able to get his uh, body really far over that volume though, which was nice for the clip, but he's definitely looking a bit tired. It's a long time since we saw Kachiro oh. Koronaga up in this part of the world. Where can Tomoe Narasaki get? He's still going and the rope just caught and it looked as if it just distracted his attention somewhat threw him off so John Won Chon the last climber out we weren't sure we were going to see the man it didn't look very probable but we are doing can John Won Chon claim a gold medal in the lead what an extraordinary achievement it would be if he did the semi-final is certainly really impressive but again, really different style of climbing on this route compared to the semi-final. Much, much steeper profile, so it's, unless you've got that really inbuilt resistance, it's definitely a lot harder to recover. The jumper finds a rest early on. It's even those uh, first couple of moves can sap just that little bit of energy out of you. So if you can get a rest like this where you can get everything back, that could be the difference between, you know, an extra two moves at the top because he's already done, you know, like, what, seven moves or so. Where he's still having to pull, still having to squeeze and work. And it, it all adds up in the end. So being strategic about those little rests at the beginning of the route can be the difference. Shop recently back in August sealed the overall title in bouldering in 2017. He did the same in 2015. 16 wasn't quite his year, albeit he won a World Cup still, but uh, 17 very much back to his best. And I was chatting to one of the coaches who said to me, for raw strength, for measurable strength, John Won Chon is probably 30% stronger than virtually anyone else in the bouldering circuit. For sure, and it's not the not the only one I've heard that from, but I've, I've heard, I think it was Alex Kazanov say that as far as basic climbing goes, he's the strongest and no one can, no one can beat him. It's quite extraordinary, quite extraordinary when you think about it though, to say 30% stronger yeah. than World Cup bouldering, ja World Cup winners. James Casse was telling me um, that he's, he's like, oh yeah, he's, he's really, really good at what he's good at and really damn good at everything else. <laughs> <laughs> a great line from James Cassidy. I, I think that really sums it up. Hopefully we'll see James in a couple of World Cups next year. Hopefully. Meanwhile, it's John Won Chon. Yeah, if James wants to come and win a World Cup, this is one of the people he's got to beat. It's an awful lot easier said than done. I think James at the moment is uh, more set on maybe building, building his son up in a few years to... <laughs> to take out the World Cup title. I think if his son was half as strong as Jong Won Chon, he'd make a pretty decent climber. 
Chong Won Chung. You can see there, that's the move where Kokoro Fuji fell. And Chong Won just about sticks it. Because that's what we're talking about, that power. It was a really, looked like a really awkward move, but he's just so strong on that left hand, but he drops it just going up for the next one. I was about to say, looks so strong on that left hand, but it's Japan 1 and 2. Chiro number 1, Tomoe Narasaki, second, Yufei Pan, up and coming Whoa. Chinese climber on the podium, Super third place. Young. Yeah, in his first World Cup final. Fantastic effort from him.